we might live to be 1,000 years old. Well, that's no big deal, right? Well, let us see. To discuss approaching immortality, please welcome to South Summit two gentlemen who are pushing the boundaries of what is possible with life itself. I give you Michael Gear and Dr. Aubrey de Grey. Aubrey, Michael, hi. I think the question we all want to know is, are we going to make it to our 1,000th birthday? Yeah, well, that is that is the question. And uh, obviously, Aubrey is the right person to answer that. So, Aubrey, what do you think? Do I think that we are close to bringing aging under complete medical control? Well, yes, I think we are. We will reach what I have called longevity escape velocity, where we are fairly comprehensively repairing the damage of aging, and we are thereby buying time for us to get better at it, and then better again, and so on, and stay one step ahead of the problem forever. So just to put that in perspective for the audience, does that mean that people watching today have the chance of actually living for a very, very long time? That's exactly what it means, that most people alive today have, at least in my view, a 50% chance of never getting sick however long they live. So, uh, I, I think you've got everybody's attention now. So what is aging so people can really get their, their heads around like what the thing actually is? Aging has been the, you know, the number one preoccupation of humanity since the beginning of civilization. So you would kind of expect that we would have come up with an agreed definition of it. But no, people have different definitions. So my definition is very, very straightforward and simple. I simply define aging as the lifelong accumulation of damage in the body that is generated as side effects of the normal metabolic processes that keep us alive from one day to the next. The analogy with a car or an aeroplane or any other man-made machine is absolutely valid. They do damage to themselves in the course of their normal operation, and they are only set up to tolerate a certain amount of that damage. But, as you say, by sufficiently comprehensive preventative maintenance, we can keep a car going as long as we like, irrespective of how long it was designed to last, which is typically only 10 or 15 years. I don't know how to fix my car, so that's, that's pretty complex to me, but there's many people on Earth that can do that very easily, right? So I, I think that's... I mean, a lot of it is psychological. People know that we can't do this yet, and they just don't want to get their hopes up. So they like to pretend that it's impossible, or that it might be actually... Aging might be a blessing in disguise in some way, so that they don't have to think about it. I like, too, the, and to emphasise, too, the things you just said. People see uh, ageing and something that is like a known disease, say, like Parkinson's or, 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 or cancer. It, it's, it's good to remember that the same therapies are actually there to repair that damage. And that's right. This is really part of the pro-aging trance, that people cling to this completely fallacious idea that there is some kind of biologically meaningful difference between the diseases of aging on one side and aging itself on the other side. There is no such yeah. thing. Everything that predominantly goes wrong with people late in life and not in early in life is part of aging, whether we call it a disease or not. When you, when you started this years ago, kind of, you know, the evangelism for this, uh, you know, way of looking at health, less people believe in it. Now that's actually come to fruition quite a bit. So we, we f it feels like we're really kind of on the edge of it after all these years. How does this, how does this play out? Like, what, what, what should people be ready for? It's a very, very important question, and I believe that actually the next few years, the next three to five years, are going to be the critical ones, because that's the period during which this already increasing, uh, burgeoning understanding of the imminence of these technologies is going to really take off and become general. Most people will realise that these therapies are probably coming soon, probably in time for them. And that's the point when they're going to make changes to their lives as a result of expecting to live a lot longer than they previously expected to live. Things like they're going to want different life insurance, different inheritance arrangements, different pension plans. And those things are going to be extremely disruptive to the global economy because they're big ticket items, right? We have to really urgently develop new products that will be ready to roll out 
when this change in people's expectations of how long they're going to live starts to happen. Because when it does start to happen, it's going to spread like wildfire. It's going to be extremely sudden. Okay, so we, we have a, a bunch of the startups today. Uh, we're going through a competition. So I wanted, to, I wanted to push you a little bit. We're, we're going to put you on the spot. So I'd like to hear from you what you think they should be ready for, what they should do, how they can be part of this. Sure. There are so many investors coming in now. The number of investors and the number of dollars that are being spent in the private sector in this space is exploding exponentially. Five years ago, there was no industry at all. It was purely a non-profit enterprise. But now it's just crazy. There are hundreds of companies. A few of these companies have gone public and, you know, they've got their ups and downs as a result of that. But still, they are... You know, you can trade the shares in them. Uh, just last week was the first example of an acquisition of a bona fide rejuvenation company named Alcahest that got bought for a quarter of a billion dollars. Um, you know, and that's going to be followed again and again and again over the next few months and few years. And the sooner you get in, the sooner you're going to be able to catch that wave. Exactly. Well, Aubrey, thank you so much for uh, joining us here today. I think. Uh, I hope that this is getting the message out even further into kind of the, the mainstream. And I know in the medical field, it's already gone mainstream. Uh, so thank you so much. Well, likewise, thank you for everything you do and for, and for this. And thank you, Michael and Aubrey. And as we hope that South Summit goes mainstream too, we can't help but wonder, as the band Oasis said, are we gonna live forever? <laughs> <laughs>